Welcome everyone. This is um, what Daisy can do for you and we're going to um, review some of the great products and TA opportunities that Daisy has available this year. Grace, do you want to take it away? Yeah. So welcome everybody. We're really glad that you're joining us on this Friday afternoon and hopefully this webinar sends you off into a great weekend and um, gives you a little bit more background about the work that we're doing and how we can work together. Um, one of the th important things about DAISY is systems change. And our why on the next slide is um, our, this is our why. And this is why we do our work every day um, with you all. And it is to improve the state's capacity to collect, report, analyze and use high quality data for part C and part B preschool data. We also are very focused on having um, early childhood data systems that allow us to address those critical policy questions that we all have about the children and families that we serve. And those questions that our data systems and our data really help us facilitate program improvement, look at equity and access to services, look at the compliance and accountability that we're all responsible for, and also allows us to do the federal and public reporting about the good work that we're doing. And on the next slide, we can talk a little bit about how DAISY can help build your capacity. So we can really work with, with you around the data collection and transmission for not only information that you would want to share with key people, families, providers, state people in your state, but also those submissions that you have for the public reporting that we're required to do. Um, we also can help with data analysis and reporting, looking at data linking and integration, helping as you um, think about using your data, the data governance and the responsibilities around data use, and also data system design and the technology. We were really focused on next, the types of data that we can help you with um, are a broad range of data. We can help you with any type of data that you're working with, but some of what we, we focus on are child and family outcomes data, the fiscal data, um, what do we know about the resources we have and how we allocate them, and accountability data, again, that public reporting that we have, but also um, all of our states are involved in the differentiated monitoring and support process and the accountability data related to that. Our child find data, who's accessing services and how our Part C 618 data, which is that required submissions, our SPP APR data, which you all just submitted your reports recently, so you're probably breathing a sigh of relief before you get ready to collect and move forward for the next year. And then any other type of data that you may be looking at, personnel data, data around equity, those important, the, that data that you need to really answer those important questions that you have for your program. On our next slide, we are committed to supporting data leaders, and we know that we want to um, have, we know we are all data leaders, leaders from where we sit, whether we're a family member, a provider, a state level person, someone who provides CSPD. We think that that is a critical role for all of us, and we want to help build the knowledge and skills of our state coordinators, but also all of our other partners and those working towards helping to serve young children with disabilities and their families. We also think it's really important to build a culture of data use. And I think as you listen today and hear about some of the products and tools and resources we have, you can see how those come together to help build that culture of data use. And as I get ready to turn it over to Tony, where we have um, Daisy staff who will share with you what we have to offer, I also want to point out that while we're talking about tools and resources today, we also have a breadth of staff with a lot of skills and knowledge and commitment to these issues who are ready to help you um, and to work together. And, and as we think about being data leaders, and using our data for program improvement. So I'll turn it over to Tony now and we'll talk more about some of what we have to offer. 
Thank you, Grace. And so today, as we move through, we'll talk about using data to advance racial equity, the special collections, the DAISY critical questions, uh, the data linking toolkit, the data visualization toolkit, the data leadership competencies, and the look, think, act module. On the next slide, I am going to introduce you to the special collection on using data to advance racial equity, which has been on the DAISY website for a few months. If you haven't checked it out, we encourage you to do so. Like all DAISY special collections, this is a set of resources. These resources focus on supporting states and using data to advance equity. You will notice many of these are DAISY presentations. So it's an opportunity to uh, see something that you haven't seen before, uh, possibly, or to refresh your memory on what you have heard in the past uh, from these presentations. A really nice feature about this collection is that each resource has a description on how Part C and 619 staff can use a particular resource. On the screen, we have an example, and we provide descriptions to help navigate through so you can find what you're looking for in a more efficient and effective manner. We do plan to continue to update this collection. It will be constantly evolving as DAISY comes out with more resources and as we find uh, more resources from other agencies and organizations that we work with. This is a, a quick peek at the topics that are covered by the different resources. We hope you will spend some time reading and listening to the resources in this special collection uh, so you can learn about the important topic of equity and so we can support children and families in our states. I do want to note that there's a, you'll notice when you go through, there are, are themes you will pick up on. And one of them is related to teams. So Grace mentioned building a data culture earlier, building teams is part of that. And having teams that include families and communi community members as part of the work is key in order for us to have a, uh, uh, to be more inclusive around our data collection analysis and, and use efforts. On our next slide, we'll talk about the, the DAISY equity questions. We are excited about this work. And, uh, and so in terms of the, the critical questions for addressing racial equity and early intervention and, and early childhood special education, uh, this, 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 uh, we do want to note that this resource is not quite finished. It is undergoing review, and there, we are hoping to have it posted soon. The equity critical questions are questions that early intervention and early childhood special education programs can and should ask to examine equity within their program, in particular with regard to equitable access, service provision, and outcomes. The questions are a companion document to the existing DAISY critical questions, which many of you may be familiar with. If you're not, we highly uh, uh, encourage you to check those out. I do want to note with the, the equity questions that we have, they were developed to take the emphasis off of children and families, because oftentimes when questions are constructed. There's a focus on children and families, which in turn has uh, can bring about this mentality of trying to fix children and families. And that's not the direction we want to go in. And uh, uh, for those of you who were at IDIO in August and, and were able to hear Heather Krauss talk about constructing questions so we can put the focus on programs, policies, and practices as opposed to putting that focus 
on children and families. And finally, for the equity questions, we do have three components uh, to them. They match up with the original set of DAISY critical questions. And these are, again, questions that people should ask about children and families, uh, practitioners, and the local programs. There are a lot of questions. So states will need to prioritize uh, because of this. And, uh, and thinking back to building a data culture, having teams, making sure we're including families and community members as part of our work at the inception. So thinking about purpose, how are we going to prioritize questions? Uh, and how are we going to analyze and use the data? It's key to have everyone involved from the beginning as opposed to providing somebody the results or a report at the very end. And at that point, it's uh, it, it is late, and we want to have people engage, uh, particularly our families and community members, uh, especially because we are collecting data about our families and communities. So they should be uh, a, a, a stakeholder that or a partner that is able to voice their uh, uh, experiences, their opinions, and beliefs in terms of what we're seeing. So, uh, it, it does the does this data resonate with what we see in our communities? And with that, uh, I will turn it over to Howard Morris. Right. Thanks, Tony. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Howard Morrison, and I'm excited to share. Daisy's uh, data linking toolkit with you all. So this toolkit includes great resources, visuals, steps, uh, tips, checklists, worksheets, and more. Um, we released the data linking toolkit in this past July, and I will share that in the chat with you all so you can have access to that resource. Um, since this is just a snippet of the presentation or of the entire toolkit, I wanted to also share um, the in-depth kind of introduction when we announced the toolkit. Um, so the structure of the toolkit is organized by an overview section, uh, data linking introduction and partnerships, uh, part C and part B and 619 data linking partners, uh, the steps to data linking and a number of additional resources. So part C and part B 619 program staff use their data to address important questions about program quality um, and results for children and their families. And so often they realize they need additional data from other partners and other agencies and other programs um, in order to answer you know, more complex questions that they want to address. And so this is where uh, the DAISY data linking toolkit comes in handy. And so in this overview section, it describes how the toolkit supports Part C and Part B 619 program staff, what the toolkit is designed for, what is not included in the toolkit, and how the toolkit should be used. So additionally, there is a blog about what's the difference between data sharing, data linking, and data integration to really give those concrete examples of those different definitions. Next slide, please. So the data linking introduction section includes what is the data linking? And so this is the process for connecting information about a record. Um, so for, for example, a child or service provider. Um, and so connecting that from one source, data source of information to another record from another data source. It also describes the goal of data linking. So in short here, to create and analyze uh, a new data set that the program can use to answer important questions um, for program improvement. And then what really drives the need for data linking? Ultimately, to be able to answer one or more complex questions that the program staff cannot answer with only Part C or Part B 619 data. And so if you want to learn more about this information, check out the Ylink data blog uh, linked here in the slides. Next slide, please. 
So in this section, the toolkit defines data linking partnerships, and it shares the benefits of data linking partnerships with concrete examples, uh, such as linked person level records, time and cost, program and agency efficiency, um, improved relationships of state staff, and also discusses the limitations, so potential risks and associated costs. Next slide, please. So this section talks about a number of potential data linking partnerships and benefits, and it also includes a great visual that depicts the different uh, potential partners. Um, some of the potential partners may include uh, early hearing detention and intervention, so EDI, uh, Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, so CAPTA, um, Early Childhood Integrated Data Systems, Statewide Longitudinal Data Systems, um, Finance Information, Personnel Information. Also, in the linking Part C data with Part B 619 data section, it describes um, data linking uh, for Part C transition with Part 619 data, linking Part C child outcomes with Part, 16, Part B 619 child outcomes data, and then questions uh, that link Part C data and Part B 619 data can answer. And then additionally, there's a blog about uh, questions that Part C and Part B 619 transition child outcomes data can answer. Next slide, please. Okay, here you'll see the steps to data linking. So we include six steps. So check data, assess partner readiness, formalize the data linking partnerships, link data, analyze data, and then sustain uh, data linking. So the graphic also includes information about partnership configuration, whether the activity is required, recommended, or optional, and what team members should be involved. And the section also includes information on data linking partnership configuration. So whether it's a single agency, single program, single agency, multiple programs, or multiple agencies in multiple programs. And the link there embedded into the slide deck really gives those examples and how that can be achieved. So on the next slide, I um, want to share a few resources. So you'll see the link to the toolkit, the link to the resources, and the link to the critical questions. On the resources direct link, this includes the data partnerships and benefits infographic. It also includes a handout for transitions and child outcomes. Um, it includes the partnership configuration infographic. There is an uh, um, assessing partner readiness packet, uh, also a packet to formalize the data linking partnership. And there is a worksheet for data analysis and dissemination plan, and then a sustaining data linking checklist. Um, next slide, please. So if you have any uh, TA, around data linking, please reach out to uh, DAISY TA and ask for help. We are here to support you in these efforts um, and you don't need to do this alone. We're here to help and support you and make that happen. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn this over to Jenna. Thanks, Howard. So I am going to share a little bit about the data visualization toolkit. The Data Viz Toolkit is one of DAISY's most popular resources with thousands of visitors each year. Since its inception, we have improved the look and feel of it by reorganizing the content more logically and adding new sections with a focus on equity and enhancing engagement, which we'll highlight today. So on the next slide, um, we just wanna share that data visualization is the representation of data and information through visualizations such as charts, info infographics, and dashboards. They can provide a quick and effective way to communicate information to your audience, to reduce text, to highlight themes, and to introduce new uh, levels of understanding. A quote that I really like is that visual displays are used with the purpose of illuminating rather than obscuring the message. So the DAISY Data Viz Toolkit includes tips and resources to help you do these things. Our primary audience and intended purpose is to help Part C and Part B state staff, state staff effectively create and present data visuals, although anyone can use and find this toolkit uh, beneficial. 
So on the next slide, we will look at how the toolkit is organized. Um, you'll see on this left-hand navigation that it's organized into four main sections, overview, general considerations, types of visualizations, and enhancing engagement. So under general considerations, you'll see we have organized the, the topics by accessibility, color, and equity. So in addition to a comprehensive set of resources, resources and tools specific to each of these topics, you'll find accessibility design principles and tips, color design principles, and considerations for designing with equity and inclusion in mind. And then moving along to the core sections of the DataViz Toolkit, we have types of visualizations, which includes charts, dashboards, data tables, infographics, maps, and qualitative visualizations. And then enhancing engagement, which includes animations, interactivity, and presentations. So within those sections, you'll also be able to access and find more information um, by this bar that you'll see, design principles, data considerations, accessibility tips, and resources and tools. So on the next slide, where should we start if we're new to data visualization. So before we take a deeper dive, we just wanted to call out that the overview section contains some general foundation foundational resources. So if you're new, we encourage you to start with the resources in the overview section. They will provide a broad overview of data viz, touch on a number of general topics and provide some ideas and examples that will inspire you to get started. So then we will show some examples on the next slide. Um, this is an example of what the design principles look like. So data considerations um, are provide, the design principles, I'm sorry, are provided in both the types of visualizations and enhancing engagement sections. So here we'll see, um, these are some design principles for the charts topic. So some examples are using the chart type appropriate for the data you are presenting, highlighting the main finding or relevant data in your chart, and using consistent access scales to avoid confusion or misleading data. So just some examples. And then on the next slide, we'll show an example of data considerations. So this is an example for infographics. Um, some examples of data considerations for infographics include things like timelines, lists, processes, or steps. So you'll find a lot more information as you dig into the toolkit. Um, on the next slide, we wanted to highlight two new and very important sections of our DAISY DataViz Toolkit. So the enhancing engagement section and the equity section. So first the enhancing engagement section. Um, this includes information on creating visually appealing presentations, interactive displays and engaging animations. So adding animations can bring data displays to life and make your point memorable. So you can see in this screenshot here, the animations data considerations page includes some really great examples of animations, cartoons, and videos. Um, they tell the story of things like IDEA data, suspension and expulsions in early childhood settings, and even a DEC conference wrap up as told by an RP ambassador avatar. So these are fun and visually engaging ways to communicate information that may help your audience in being more receptive to information as it engages multiple senses through both sight and sound. And then interactivity. Interactive visualizations such as dashboards allow the user to directly engage with the data. So whether they can explore the data freely, manipulate or filter the data, select a specific time period within an interactive timeline or zoom in on a map, these interactive displays can provide opportunities for fuller understanding of trends and relationships. And then finally, the presentation section provides tips to intentionally tell a story with data. Um, on the next slide, we wanted to showcase the designing with equity and inclusion in mind section. This is also a new section. So data are a powerful tool for identifying and addressing inequities. At the same time, data can and have been used intentionally and un unintentionally to harm historically marginalized groups. So our toolkits equity section provides recommendations, design principles, and resources to help prepare inclusive and equitable data visualizations. So these recommendations are listed on the screen and include things like considering the direct and indirect meaning and usefulness of colors and icons. So in this section, um, 
Included is the Urban Institute's Applying Racial Equity Awareness and Data Viz, which provides helpful, helpful pointers on the subject, such as avoiding incremental color palettes to represent different demographic groups, avoiding color choices, images, and icons that reinforce racial and gender stereotypes, such as colors associated with skin tones, are using pink and blue to represent women and men, and paying attention to whether photos or images represent the diversity of the groups in your data, and being thoughtful about the images you include. Include foundation is providing context. So data visuals are open to interpretation. So it's critical to provide your audience with context. This could be context about the limitations of data, where the data come from, and the structural inequities present. So as readers, we bring our own mindsets, experiences, and biases to the data. So context matters to not perpetuate these inequities. Another recommendation is being mindful of your labels. So labeling chart elements like categories and values aid readers' interpretation, but they can also be misused in ways that harm or dehumanize certain groups. So included in this uh, topic area is the Urban Institute's Do No Harm Guide, which provides three considerations for labeling data visualizations, such as us using labels that emphasize people's humanity, ordering labels purposefully, and clarifying who is missing. Another re recommendation is reflecting lived experiences, and you can do that by engaging members of communities that are reflected in the data, using qualitative data whenever possible to help tell the story behind the data, and considering the diversity of experiences within aggregated identity groups. And then finally, another recommendation is using inclusive language guides. So on the next slide, um, you will see that as you navigate through the toolkit on the next slide, um, you'll notice the new stamp next to any of these new resources and tools that we've added. It's this yellow new stamp. And yep, and then finally, check out our new and improved data, DAISY Data Viz Toolkit um, on the next slide. The link is listed here. You won't want to miss it. And I'll pop the link into the chat. And we can move on to the next slide. Awesome. So there is the link and also in the chat. And then I will pass it over to Faith. Thank you so much, Jenna. I'm going to tell you about a, an exciting new resource at DAISY, um, Early Childhood Data University, um, known as ECDATU. So it's an online learning experience that fits busy schedules. Uh, the content is streamlined to focus on relevant data components and users can access content in different formats with reflection and application exercises, as well as links to supplemental resources. Some elements are asynchronous, meaning users can choose to attend live presentations, workshops, or discussions. But many elements are asynchronous, meaning users can complete them at their own pace at a time that works best for them. EC Data U is a tool intended for all data users. Next slide, please. So how is data, data, EC Data U organized? EC Data U has three paths, data foundations, data analysis, and data use and sharing. A path is a way to get from one place to another. You can walk an entire path, or you can stop and turn around at any time. EC Data U is set up similarly. You can look at all the information, activities, and resources in one path, or you can jump from path to path, selecting the content that best suits your needs at a specific point in time. These paths assist in finding information, activities, and other resources to increase knowledge and understanding of Part C and Part B 619 program data and other data-related topics. Each path includes courses that are connected to the data leadership competencies. Next slide, please. DAISY developed these data leadership competencies to support Part C and Part B 619 staff in acquiring the knowledge and skills required to become effective data leaders. Competencies are a set of performance behaviors that are observable, measurable, and critical to successful individual, team, and agency performance. And all of the courses are tied to these competencies. Next slide. 
The 37 competencies are organized around the three components of data leadership, foundational data skills, infrastructure, and building a culture of data use. All the competencies are about building human capacity, the first component of data, data leadership. However, major subsets of competencies address the knowledge and skills needed to build a culture of, of data use and others refer to the data system infrastructure. So now we're going to take a look at what the resource actually looks like. Next slide, please. If we look at the side menu, you can see that there's a list of what's included um, in this, in the EC Data U resource, the data leadership competencies and the three pathways. If you were to start on one of the paths, such as the data foundations, you'll find here, as you can see here, an overview, and then the courses and content on that's included in this particular path. Next slide, please. Each course has learning objectives and is connected to data leadership competencies. Next slide. And as you can see, there's content. For this particular course, there is a recorded video that participants can watch whenever is convenient for them. And then as you're going to expect, DAISY has many resources available so that participants can continue to learn um, and expand their learning on this uh, topic. And then next slide. And then finally, each course has reflection and practice activities. So participants are able to connect the new learning um, to their work and making it meaningful. And this is the model for each of the paths. Next slide, please. So I've included a quick peek at some of the courses that we currently have. And then on the next slide is a peek at what's coming um, in the upcoming year. And now I am pleased to hand it over to Cindy, who will be sharing the Look, Think, Act modules with you. This is uh, Cindy and I want to introduce you to the Look, Think, Act using data for program improvement free uh, online module that's accessible on the DAISY website. And uh, go ahead, next slide. I want you to imagine this. You are in a room, in a meeting with papers and charts and graphs covering the table. And the team lead says, tell me about this program. How are we doing? Next slide. You know, is she met with confused looks? and maybe a few looks of excitement. Next. Does she hear the team say, you know, where do we even start? What is all of this? You know, we are drowning in data. Can someone please throw us a lifeline? Next. And Daisy's Look, Think, Act module on using data for program improvement really is that lifeline. And Look, Think, Act is as simple as it sounds. And it's a process people already use probably every single day. slide. So have you ever been driving down the road and you hear your dashboard chime so you glance down and notice the fuel pump icon is lit and the red needle is very near the empty mark? So you find the nearest station to gas up your car. Well, you just used look, think, act. You looked at the gauge, you attached meaning to what you saw, and you acted. And we are going to take a few minutes on the next slide to watch uh, an introduction video to the Look, Think, Act modules. Welcome to this learning module on using data to improve your early intervention or early childhood special education program. In this module, you will learn about Look, Think, Act, a simple process for examining and acting on your data. Why should you use Look, Think, Act? Consider the time and resources it takes to collect and report required data. Does all this effort lead to making your program stronger, or are you not sure what to do with all that data? Are you or your colleagues committed to answering questions you have about your program, but not completely comfortable using data to act? Look, Think, Act can help. And best of all, you don't need to be a data expert to get started. Look, Think, Act is a process that helps people engage with data and then use data to make program improvements. 
It works best when teams of people with different perspectives look at data and together figure out what it means. But team members often have different levels of comfort with looking at data. Has anyone handed you papers with charts and tables and asked you to talk about program data and you greet them with a blank stare? Or have you gathered a group of people to review your program and everyone goes silent when you show the data? Look, Think, Act helps get everyone actively involved with the data by providing a structure to look at and reflect on data together. As with most worthwhile endeavors, preparation is a key to success. Preparation will help you and your team use Look, Think, Act efficiently and effectively. There are several ways to prepare. Identify the questions you hope the data will answer, assemble a diverse team, and prepare your data. Start with your question. What is it that you want to know about your program? What problem are you hoping to solve? Which data are going to help you answer the question? Next, consider the diverse perspectives needed to dig into your question. Family members, administrators, teachers, service providers, other colleagues who have a vested interest in your program, people from different racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds, and people with disabilities. Engaging diverse perspectives will help you see, understand, and act on data in meaningful and equitable ways. If you have someone who understands data and can explain the charts and graphs to others, add them to the team. If you do not have someone, yet, then think about who in your community could help. With or without a data person, you are taking a great first step by assembling a diverse team. Preparing to look also requires creating something for your new team to look at related to your question. Create graphs, charts, diagrams, or other ways to show your data that people can understand easily. And it helps if you display your data in ways that are visually appealing and engaging. Now it's time to assemble your team and let the fun begin. Not surprisingly, the process begins with having your team members look at the data charts, graphs, and other displays and share what they see in the data. At the look stage, team members make factual statements about the data. They make comparisons, identify patterns, and point out data that doesn't fit any pattern. Although it can be tempting to begin to interpret or attach meaning to what the team sees in the data, it is critical to have a thorough look at the facts first. This helps team members put their own biases aside and let the facts speak before they begin making conclusions. During the think stage, the team interprets the data. They attach meaning to what they saw. They consider factors they believe may have influenced the data or caused the program to get the results shown in the data. What do the findings from the look stage mean for our work? What are some of the reasons that might have given us the results we see? Now is the time to draw conclusions from the data that will inform action. And finally, the act stage. Your team proposes actions based on the conclusions. Actions may be as simple as collect more data to better understand the problem, or as complex as a change in state or local policy. Look, Think, Act works best when you have a supportive environment for using data to make meaningful program improvements. Building or strengthening a program's culture of data use is one part of creating this environment. You grow a culture of data use when the people in your organization value data and regularly put that value into practice, using data to inform decisions. As people engage in look, think, act, they build their understanding and confidence in using data and grow in their appreciation of the power of data to improve programs. This learning module will help you learn more about look, think, act and how it can support your work. It also will provide resources for creating a supportive environment for using data, which includes your data infrastructure and other system components. Look, Think, Act can help you make the most of the data you're probably already collecting. This process can help you use those data to make program improvements that can lead to better outcomes for the children and families you serve. 
Start building a collaborative and supportive environment for using data by following the simple steps in this module. Are you ready to look, think, and act? Thank you, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to where you can find the modules in the chat. And um, you can also just go to the DAISY website and in the search bar, type Look, Think, Act, and you'll be able to find these self-paced free modules. And also remember that DAISY TA providers are always available to help support the use of this learning module or any other TA needs that you might have. So I am going to turn this over to Sally now. Thanks, Cindy. Um, go ahead, Chris, and click to the next slide. Next couple of slides, actually. Um, next one. I'm just going to go over a few highlighted um, TA opportunities. And you can see here that DAISY has a, a very wide range of multiple types of TA, from state individualized TA um, to toolkits that you can use on your own or get help from DAISY staff. TA staff to help with those toolkits in the implementation, all the way to resources that you can explore and use on your own. Um, next slide, Chris. So I'm going to highlight just a few of these available resources. And you noticed um, throughout the webinar, we've used these icons. And so that helps um, sort of explain a little bit about what the resources are. And so maybe you can uh, find those pathways a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to go over four different um, resources that are available on DAISY's website, the learning modules, um, a web page for families, um, the revised DAISY data system framework, and topic library. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the next few slides. So if you notice, um, the learning modules, the Look, Think, Act is one of our newer modules that Cindy just went over. We also have um, um, DAISY Dynamic Impact, and that is a team-based um, improvement approach for ongoing program improvement and systems change. Um, that module, again, you can, as a state, use that on your own. Um, you can contact us and have us help you walk through that, or that could be something that you um, use with stakeholders. So it really is how to form a team, um, how to work together as a team, how to um, create those systems and create that team so that it um, actually functions over a long period of time. Um, there are other modules that have been on there as well on that website, on that web particular web page, um, including a favorite SPP APR module, which um, hopefully some of you got some of you used um as you were developing your own aprs this year um another web page that we have is for families and so this is a resource that states can use with their um, local um, stakeholders and really this is these are resources um, that you can share with families that you can walk through with families and again as always you can reach out to us and um, we can help you develop a plan to use those or facilitate that if you need. Um, next slide, Chris. This, um, the DAISY data system framework, um, more commonly referred to as the DAISY framework, um, like I said, was recently revised um, and with equity in mind, and that was re-released in 2022. So the DAISY framework contains five interrelated subcomponents, um, and these are seen on the slide. And it also has four cross-cutting themes that are addressed in multiple of the subcomponents. So those themes are data quality, stakeholder engagement, um, integration of Part C and Part B619 data with each other and data from other programs serving young children, and of course, equity. So next slide, Clarice. And the last one that I'd like to highlight is the topic library. Um, so this uh, particular web page, when you go to it, if you have a particular topic that you just want more information on, 
um, you can go in there and all those topics are listed. Click on one of those and then it takes you to the, the, the really wide array of um, resources that DAISY has available. And on here you can see some of these topics um, that's included, but I'm not going to read them to you because you guys can read them on your own. Um, and we'll stick the links in the chat. Um, shortly. Um, and just, I should have started off with this. If you have questions or um, I know some people joined a little bit later, um, if you want some more information on some of the other topics, if you came in in the middle of that and would like the link or whatever, stick that information in the chat. Um, and we'll either, um, if we have time, um, answer that question immediately following the presentation or we'll follow up in an email. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Cindy to talk about some of the um, great TA opportunities we have and the ones that we have planned. Cindy, we can't hear you. I've been bad about the unmute today. <laughs> Daisy's Improving Data, Improving Outcomes, or more fondly called IDIO Conference, was held this past August, so August 2022. And due to many requests, four sessions were selected to do encore presentations. Three of the sessions have already taken place and are listed here on the slide. But if we click to the next slide, we'll see the fourth um, and final presentation that's coming up. And uh, this is um, on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th of this year, and it features our keynote speaker, Heather Kraus, and the topic is data equity, how to align your data with your mission. And um, we do have a link to registration, which I'm gonna drop in the chat right now. And, um, feel free to go ahead and register. There's no cost to attend these uh, Encore presentations. And you can access all of the uh, conference sessions on the DAISY website under a section called Webinar and Conference Archives, which is linked within these slides. And you can get to the IDIO 2022 from there as well. I highly encourage you to, uh, if you were not able to attend the keynote speaker, uh, her original presentation, this is your chance to get to hear the encore. Next slide. This is just a few of the things planned for this next year that's coming up. So we're looking forward in time and um, a few of the resources and TA opportunities are these three cohorts that will be um, offered. The first one is the opportunity for data, uh, Part C data managers to meet in person to do some planning and work together and, and lay out um, future, future meetings for them. A second cohort is using data to support systems change. And a final cohort will be uh, local data use. And cohorts typically are uh, uh, 12 to 24 months in length. So one to two years, and it's an application process to apply and just keep your eye out in DAISY newsletters. Um, and emails, and you'll hear more about those. We also have the Differentiated Monitoring and Support, or DMS Working Series, that's available for state staff who are in OSEP's um, DMS cohorts one through three. However, if you're not in those particular cohorts, the information that is created and shared during those cohorts is going to be made available to all states, since all states will be going through a DMS um, process at some point in time, if you aren't already. And then something to keep an eye out for um, in the next several months is the Equity and the Data Lifecycle Guide. And this guide will, will um, also be followed up with a learning opportunity, whether it's a webinar or a coffee talk, we're not sure yet, but there'll be some opportunity for state staff to come to deck together to talk about the data life cycle and the um, infusing equity within each of those processes within that data life cycle. So that's just a glimpse of what's coming up, and I am going to throw this back to Sally. Thanks, Cindy. Um, I'm just going to close this out. Again, we, you've heard this multiple times. Reach out to your um, DAISY liaison or your TA contact at DAISY. Um, they're very flexible. You could reach them by phone, email, send a quick meeting request. Um, and even if a lot of times um, 
states think that they only need to reach out for some type of really big intensive TA pro project or product. Um, and we definitely welcome that, but we also just welcome questions. Um, so if you just need an ear or someone to help you think through or talk through um, an issue, or you just have a random question, reach out. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, and we're always available. Um, someone will definitely get back to you just um, as soon as they possibly can. So I don't see any um, questions in the chat. So Chris, if you'll take us to the final slide. We just really want to thank you for all that you do um, to serve the children and families, and we wish you a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody.